a few people um, recently and over the years have asked me to do a tutorial on drawing and a realistic eye, so that's what I thought I would do today. Um, the supplies I'm using are, this is a smooth cardstock. I, I just enjoy working on it, it's just nice and smooth. <clears throat> I'm gonna use a .3 mechanical pencil, which I like, it has some weight to it. I can't find all my other ones, um, my kids steal them, or else I would be using those, actually, um, in different, diameters, the 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, and 0.9 are um, the really their only options, and I use all of them, but all I have is my 0 0.3 today, which is great for beginning sketches. Um, it's usually a 2B lead, and then I'm going to use um, regular pencils with of different varying softnesses. This is a 6B and an 8B. Um, in different brands. I'm not really a brand person. I just kind of use whatever I got kicking around. Um, and then as far as kind of blending stumps go, I like these ones, which are um, more are more solid. They're just cotton. And um, I, these are by Creative Mark, and you can buy like a big pack of assorted sizes. And the dirtier, the better. So these are nice and dirty and ready to roll. And then um, I need some different erasers. I like this eraser because it's in the same point as a pencil, so you can kind of get in there. If that's not <clears throat> good enough, I will use um, a kneaded eraser is nice because you can sharp it, sharpen it so to speak into tips and then this is my favorite eraser which is called it's called a vanishing eraser and it works really well so that's pretty much all I'm going to use today I have um another pencil I like is by Prismacolor it's ebony and it's just a, it's its own thing there's no numbers on it and I really do like that as well so I might pop that in there too um first thing I do is I grab a reference um so here's my reference. There's a ton. I, if you want to go on my Pinterest, I have, I pinned a ton of these. I have in the past as well. Um, I'm cool mama Karen on Pinterest and you can follow me. I think I have only 99 boards, <laughs> but eyes is one of them. And I have some really good black and white reference photos on there, but this is what I'm going to be using. Um, I don't have to use a reference. I've drawn enough eyeballs over the years to do it, but I think it's way more um, uh, it's just easier to do it if you have a reference. It's kind of, you get to turn your brain off and it, if you want it to be really realistic, you really need to look at a reference. And this one is almost a photograph. That's how realistic it is. And that's what was requested. So I'm going to do my best just to see if I can deliver. I do not make any promises. This video is really bad. You won't even know it ever existed, but, um, I'm going to do my best to to uh, see what I can do here. So I'm starting with my 0.3 pencil. And uh, I'm going to just start off by really trying to draw what I, copy what I see here. I'm not pushing down super light because I have a lot of erasing in my future. I already know that's just part of the how it goes and excuse me I have a cold so I'm kind of sniffly here and now this part of that when I normally draw is I normally <clears throat> would be this lower lash lid would be is usually straight across in quote unquote real people um it would be more like this this one is sort of this gaping this is a less common eye shape I think you don't normally see the bottom of a pupil. I mean of an iris. It's usually cut off That's just something to note. It's kind of neither here nor there. Just thought it was interesting So when you start off, you know, I, I Kind of you're kind of feeling your way around the drawing um, More or less by looking at it. And what's cool about using a reference is it doesn't have to be exactly, because um, of the end result, all that matters is sort of that this is 
looks like an eye, not so much that it has to look like my reference. So if you are using a reference, don't don't beat yourself up if it's not exact. I think that's totally fine and to be expected and it's just practice. All right, so the first thing I notice is that like there's like this line here at the bottom. And you can start anywhere. I just am feel like starting there. So that's the first thing that I'm kind of drawn to notice. So that's the first thing that I'm going to focus on. So we have like the bottom part of the eye. And then there's like another line. There's a double line. So this that that's like the lash line. And then there's like if you go up there's like another line right there. So that's what I'm gonna draw next. And it's really white in there. So it's almost like I need to erase the line that's already there to get rid of any extra, extra scribble scrabbles. And really go ahead and make an effort to, it should not be sketchy like this, but there's only so much control I have over that at this moment in time. And there's kind of my, and that really should be free of anything in there. So I'm trying to erase that. I also like these mechanical pencils because erasers are so small. Kind of gives, it's a double bonus. You get that tiny eraser. And I keep that inside clean. And here's my pencil tip eraser, which is great for these little details. Okay. And then, yeah. So there's kind of the first thing that I would do. <clears throat> All right. Um, let's see. The second thing I notice is that my little tear duct looks a little bit too big. So just making adjustments there. And then I also notice, and if you notice, I keep saying I notice, I notice this, because really what this isn't about is not actually about drawing an eyeball at all. It's about drawing what you are looking at. That is the secret to drawing. So my brain is not saying you're drawing an eye, a tear duct. Your your my brain is saying okay. There's like a this is like a triangle, soft triangle shape, and it's darker at the top than at the bottom. That's what is really happening in my brain. So I take that, and it's a little darker here, and then I try to recreate what I see. Okay, so going along the top lash line, it's pretty dark right here. This line is very dark. So I'm just reiterating that with my 0.3 pencil. And then there's like a separation, a little tri, oops, sorry, a little triangle on this end that I notice as well. <clears throat> then there's the lid on top, which is about this far. Yeah, I have to, my eyeballs have to kind of measure how far that appears to be. And it's, oh, there's like a double little fold right here. There's like this one, and then this comes out a little bit. Then it flattens up a little tiny bit, according to this rendering anyways, and then it goes around. And of course, every human, this will be different, which is also why it doesn't really matter if your, if your final doesn't come out the same as your reference, it's fine, because human eyes have variations. So maybe yours doesn't look like the reference, but maybe it looks exactly like someone else's eye in real life. Do you know what I mean? So don't sweat it too much. Now this is so pointy and so, um, it's so pointy and thin that it's marks it leaves are pointy and thin. 
So like already I know this is going to be much a much softer, darker line than that. So you can almost already, I switched to my softer pencil because I know that I'm going to be smearing those with the blending stick later. I don't like how there's, this is like a, almost like a, almost like a kink here. So that needs to really be a smooth smooth not an angle in any way okay and then the eyebrow it starts let's see here it's above the eye it starts outside a little bit and it's you know made up of hairs ideally And it kind of tapers as it goes. So we could kind of mess with that later, but I just want to put it in there. And there is a little bit of shading on this drawing, which kind of represent there's like a hard line here, which is kind of like where the nose starts. And actually this shading you can see goes this way. So I'll just kind of pop. Actually, in this, there's, this is a little bit at an angle. And then it kind of fades, fades off into the distance. <clears throat> so we're still getting kind of just laying things out here. And then the pupil, I mean the iris, is a perfect circle that's kind of cut off so if you notice when I make my circle my whole arm is moving my wrist is actually like super duper like not moving at all it's like I have a cast on my broken elbow and it's not moving so my arm is what's moving and that's the best way to practice doing a circle and this looks a little on the big side so from all of those 50 circles I just made I'm gonna kind of identify the perimeters of that now this eye I notice is much closer to the bottom lid than what I have drawn so I'm actually, but if I make this circle bigger, then it's going to be bigger than their iris. So actually what I'm going to do is bring this closer. This ends sooner. And just make that adjustment. That. So I added a third line and then I'm erasing the bottom one to kind of bring that up. That's fine. It's a little wonky. But when I get all the lashes and everything around there, it doesn't really make this little ooching this way or that way. Is it going to make a huge difference? Oh, my nose is running. I'm so sorry, you guys, to hear my sniffles. Almost like this folds. Laying out the perimeters is the most important part. And it's the hardest part, but it's, the <laughs> once you get really rolling, you, there's a point where you can't really go back. So it's important to really get all that figured out. Well, and this is fine, because I noticed that there's a second part to that tear duct. And then it segues 
again into that little lower leg lip lid I don't even know what I'm saying lid eyelid all right and then we have so we have the outer eye and if we're really having problems with the circle just you can trace something and then we have the pupil in the middle which again I'm making by moving my arm and not my wrist okay <coughs> that is a little bit bigger All right, now th that everything is laid out lightly, I'm gonna start going in with my softer pencils. So first, <clears throat> and they call this laying down. So you're laying down, literally laying down a line of graphite. This is my 6B and along that lash line is super dark. It's really like black so I want to in my head I am looking at this eye and visualizing it with no lashes. The lashes are the last thing to go on so right now I'm just trying to look past the lashes and I'm looking at this upper lash line and I know how this is super dark so this is what I'm drawing right now and then I'm gonna take my blending stump and create some shadows so I know it's dark here but then it fades <clears throat> so I'm pressing down with my blending stump and I want that to that darkness. To permeate that way. And alternately, this crease line is also really dark. And it kind of splits again. And that also fades around it. Just blend the eyebrow while I'm here too. And I'm using the side of my blending stump. And I'll go over that again, but right now we're just creating like a base value and I think my I don't like how this looks super pencil-y if you will it also has to do because my paper is really smooth sometimes I actually do it's better to do this with a paper that has a little bit of a tooth on it Blending stump to moosh 
Moosh your line. You, you're interested in learning how to draw like whimsy, whimsical versus realistic and trying to find your style and learning values and blending and all these techniques. I do offer a class on awesomeartschool.com called uh, Drawing Days and it's really drawing for beginners. And uh, it's all about this stuff. So now I'm just taking my blending stick is nice and dirty. So I'm just going to keep kind of using it till the dirt runs out, so to speak. And I'm looking at my reference and I'm noticing all the places that I get this. Okay, this right here is all shaded. So I'm using my blending stick. I just am mushing my graphite with my blending stick and I'm going like, huh. I'm going to need that same effect elsewhere. So while my blending stick is dirty, I'm going to I'm going to use it till it's not dirty enough to make marks anymore and then I'll have to go lay down some more graphite and then I will go squish that bit around. So I'm starting to run out, so I need to put down some more graphite so that I can smear it. All right. So now we have the pupil. I could get a lot of graphite down by using by uh, starting on my pupil, so that's what I'm going to do. So, <clears throat> let's see, I wonder, oh, that's too big. Don't hesitate to use a, a template of some sort. Okay, so I actually have a circle template <laughs> way back from when I was in graduate school. I cannot find it. So this is what I usually do. If I'm trying to find a perfect circle to trace, I grab some things that are circular items around my studio. Look at this, this paint, this is the top to my, uh, a paint can, a spray paint can, and it's, <laughs> it's exactly the right size. It's exactly, so my circle, as you can see, was pretty, pretty damn close to being perfect. But I like, if I'm doing an eye, it's gotta look really good. So I'm gonna just um, use this to trace. can't believe it's the right size. It's hilarious. If you want to be really good and not surprised, you can also start with your pupil and then build your eye around it and then you'll know that it's the right size. Now look at this. This is a little jar. This is sitting right in front of me. <laughs> um, and you know, pupils can be bigger or smaller. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> You don't have to be super, um, this, this might be too big. I don't know if I like, I kind of like the smaller, the smaller pupil. It's a lot of work to have these, the great big pupil. Um, but that's the beauty of erasing. Yeah, I think that's a little bit too big. I wish I could find my circle template. And I do think my pupil is maybe a little bit low. See, when I try to sketch it, it doesn't work, but once I get my hand kind of going, it works a little bit better. <laughs> Except for this one. All right, so I have the outside. That's cool. And I do want this band to be a little bit bigger. Now, I don't want to do the whole thing with in the same direction, so I'm going to change directions in a minute. It's almost like brush strokes. You don't want to show your brush strokes. So, but first things first, we need a band. And also, we every time you put graphite down, you, you're gonna be blending it in. <clears throat> so you want something, you kinda need, you need it down so that you can move it. But first things first. Okay, 
Now I notice right away, you have these, chuk, 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 chuk. these lines are going this way. And they're also coming from out of your pupil. Oh, I really wish I had a circle that was the right size. And people do all sorts of crazy things when they do eye, realistic eyes. Now, if I was smart, I would have like, usually it's, it's harder to erase out the whiteness of the eye, but I might cheat and use some gouache or paint pen or something to really punch out the whiteness. Or you can leave the shape of the pupil that is going to become the little twinkle. But right now I'm just filling it in because this video is already going to be super long. So it's like the darkest around the edges, and then you have these, these kind of varying degrees of spokes that come out. Now I already know this is all going to get blended together, so I'm, you can kind of be quick and dirty about it a little bit. So these are like rays of the sun. And right now I'm not really following <clears throat> the structure of that reference so so closely and just kind of going off and doing my own thing and then I'm gonna have these also coming from the other side this reminds me of like an EKG reading <laughs> doing these little squiggles but then you have like a band in the center that's going to be sort of highlighted and the blending stump is what ties everybody together and you can also the cool thing about this too is you can always go back and add more or take it away with your eraser. You could also do this in pens and charcoal. But to get this ball rolling, <clears throat> and then what we can do is have our blending stump here. Let's see what happens if we just push down and pull towards the people. So at the edges, I'm pushing down really hard. And then you can do it like super lightly towards the center. Super hard at the edges and lighter towards the center. Super hard and light. Super hard and light. Super hard and light. All right, so I don't like this. This is still, like I can see all the lines and stuff from your pencil, which is not good. You really want it to be like solid, 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 solid. Solid. So in order to kind of get rid of your pencil line, you really got to blend the heck out of it. 
and push down pretty hard with that blending stem. So we need to make these lines even darker. I'm going to try this. This is my ebony. Prismacolor pencil. And again, we're going to need to carve out our little twinkle. And then what's cool is about having, doing once you've done all the blending is that you can then go back and you can punctuate the eye with some individual lines that are stand out more than the others. That gives it some additional kind of definition here. Just make sure they're going in the right direction. They're all kind of stemming out together. And again, so the outline can be blackest. And if you need your template, go ahead and use it. Anchors, anchors it. All right, now let's. I'm gonna see if I can dig out that eye shine with my eraser. I don't think I'm gonna be able to, so I'll probably need some help. Um, but we'll see what we can do. So let's see. This is like a crescent shape. This was working in charcoal. This would work much better. This is like a, this shape here. And ideally, this highlight would be the whitest of the white. And then there's also one that like starts here that really digs out into here into the white of the eye. And even kind of butts out. So I'd already I'd already shaded this part. And then there's kind of another shine like here. Should call this like eraser art. And then anywhere else you want to punch out to make more sparkle or whatnot, you can do that. And if it's too much, you can kind of blend it back in. Oh, it's not too, too severe. Okay. All right, let's keep going. So we have this part up here. There is like this white band of highlight on top of the lid that will stay that way. And again, I'm noticing around the eye, this is all shaded. So I'm running out 
of graphite to smear. So I really actually need to add more there. And I'm using my, this ebony pencil I really do like. And I'm punching up those areas. Oof. I need to, I'm gonna run this around the bottom. Because I need that graphite to blend. And those eyelashes are going to come out of this, again, that little lip. The lip of the lid is where the eyelashes are going to come out of. So now that I have that down, then I can create some better shade. Again, using the side of your blending tool. You can also use a Q-tip, your finger for this. Just your dirty blending stuff. Stump is pretty much where it's at. And you can also, if you need to cheat, you can put down a bunch of graphite and then make your blending stump dirty and work that way. Totally fine too. Just darkening up on the top lid. I also noticed the shading in this area needs to be darker. It's very dark right there. All the way down to the what's this called again? Thingamajiggy. And this is all shaded. And this is shaded on either side of that little eye shine there. And then even this over here ends in a very distinctive ending here. And my drawing, this comes to like a like a triangle. So I'm gonna put back the triangle. Okay. And once that shading is done, and I'm just following the shading that I see in my reference. You don't have to come up with this stuff by yourself. Someone has already drawn it somewhere, so you can do all your practice just by pulling up a picture that you like. And really trying to do your best to copy what they're doing. It doesn't have to be a real eyeball, or it could be a real eyeball. If you add too much shading, like there, you can just... Voila! Erase it! I think we're about ready for some eyelashes. Oh, let's do our eyebrow first. <clears throat> 
So I'm going to just start with my Prismacolor pencil and just see how much of this I can recreate. So, I always tell my students, even my kids' students, you know, when you're drawing thing, pictures of things that grow, um, you start with where the, wherever they're coming from. So, like grass grows from the ground, so you draw from the bottom up. And hair grows from the root down, so you start from the top and draw down. So I'm going to do the same approach with the eyebrow. And I'll do the same thing. And then I'm just going to kind of blend loosely on top some of the individual hairs I'm not like huge fans of. But if you run your blending stump over it, then they kind of marry together a little bit better. So, it's less noticeable. Again, there's a little bit heavier shading right in this area. So I'm going to put some heavy shading in that area as well. So it's like your pictures hold all the information that you need in them. You just have to figure out how to translate that to your own paper. some eyelashes and this is kind of deeper than that This isn't like my true bag. I like to do mixed media and make a mess more than I like to do realistic drawings, but it is such good practice. And people have been asking, so I am more than happy to do that. As long as I don't screw it up. Okay, so now we need some eyelashes. Now, if I had my mechanical pencil, if I could find it in the point nine, that's 100% what I would use for the eyelashes. However, I can't find three of my mechanical pencils. So I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna keep working with my Prismacolor Ebony. I did sharpen it, however. So, again, when you're drawing things that are growing, you always, you really do need to start with them where they are. So, there about here. I hate this part, and you guys know I'm not a detail person, so this kind of work pisses me off. It's a terrible thing to say, I know, but I really don't enjoy this level of detail. I would much rather take a big brush and do that than do this, but... Oh. I have a special weak spot for my students. What can I say? And then these are almost like, this person took the time to like, take a couple of these and marry them together. Cause these are pretty fat lashes. Which again, uh, fine. <laughs> if I must, I will do it. But I'm not happy about it. <laughs> I might be putting significantly fewer lashes on than uh, I should be. And I know they're like different, 
you know, they come down at different angles or whatever. But these are definitely, um, should be thicker. And they do come down a little bit, like down and then up, down and then up. Marry those together. There's a heck ton of lashes, but their workaround, as I'm beginning to see again, is that they're kind of putting two together. That one should have been more like that. So more curved up, mine are like going straight out. This is like what my lashes look like there. I want them to be curly, but really they're just uncomfortable. <laughs> okay. And then when they get up here, as they get towards the top, of the pupil, they start switching directions. And they really do, this line is really dark. So you can take some of this and kind of Oh, halfway there. This is brutal. Switch directions yet? <laughs> I know the lengths are supposed to be varied. And then it's like right when they get over the eye, they're straight up and down. And then they start going the other way. Like how many of us wish we had this many eyelashes, right? I know I do. And then they kind of get shorter as they go around the sides here. Do one more long, dramatic one. Oh, I feel like mine could be longer. I feel like they could definitely, we'll put some longer pieces in there. Just a couple. Dream Lashes. It's my dream Lashes song. It's an original, actually. <laughs> Could even be longer still, right? <laughs> Eyelashes are super weird if you're think about it kind of like reminding me of bugs okay and then we have to go back to the bottom whoo whoo this half of this video length is just gonna be eyelashes I think I'm better at doing I was gonna say downstairs lashes that's funny bottom lashes than light ones then up ones top ones what am I even saying right now in the butt. <laughs> I'm 
All right, so we're coming around. We can do it. Oh, one more over there. And then we have a couple here. Oh, oh, oh. All right. So when we get to the middle, then that's when they start changing directions a little bit. Here we'll have some like that are confused, like which way do I go? I don't know. And then, oh, maybe these are a little too long. And they start to kind of like peter out too. Thank goodness. And then I'm gonna take a look back and look at her. I think she'll look less spidery because she looks a little spidery. If this line, the lash line gets blended. But now we have all that graphite down, so now blending is like super easy. Do, 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 do. All right, so now we need to do like a full assessment and say, all right, what did we do right? What else needs to be done? Did we forget anything? Does any places need to be punched up and be brighter or does anywhere need to be darker too? And I'm just kind of adding, this is like the skin, right? Um, all right, so. Okay, what areas can we, now I'm gonna go in with my skinny little guy, because if I push down, I can make him pretty dark. So I want things that need to be punched out. Let's see this. Part of the eye can get a little punchier. And again, I'm going based on my reference. Let's make sure you have a good reference. On here, this line can be more definitive. The under the eye shadow is always a thing, no matter what kind of medium you're working with. You can darken that with confidence. I'm just adding, like, punching up more accentuated. Oh, I just tore a hole through my paper. <laughs> That's awesome. Maybe I shouldn't push down. Wait, that hard? Just saying. I want my people to be even darker. Um, let's see. Boom, boom, ba -da boom. This. I feel like this line could even come down more. Right? That's like the nose, the bridge of the nose. Um, yeah, I think that's it. We can make this white whiter if we wanted to like. You can also change the shape of your eye shine if you don't like it. Um, but the places that need to be punched out, I kind of carved out from beginning. This, there's a highlight there. There's a highlight here. Um, this stays white. This, I kind of just kept that white this down here. And then, yeah, you can always take your eraser and kind of carve out some more 
highlights if you want to make your eye dr more dramatic or you can really have that kind of keep it so if this part shaded more then your highlight is gonna punch out a little bit better so there you have it one realistic eyeball this one is much darker um, I don't know if they did it in pen or charcoal but this is the graphite that I use today so there's only so black that you can get using graphite but I'm very I'm happy with it her lashes are a little spidery I could get rid of that by joining a bunch of taking the time to like join some of these up like I did at the beginning but um, I can't, I don't have that time because I have to go pick up my kids from school pretty soon. So um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I ended up only using three of these tools. I used the Prismacolor, the Point 0.3, my blending eraser, and I think the 8B, and that's all I ended up using. So um, good luck, have fun. If you go on my website, I'll link it in the description box. Um, I have a, on uh, my Karen Campbell artist website I have like a supplies list where I'll put down the um, where I, you can find all of these tools on there and links to Amazon if you're interested um, but other than that I hope you had fun like I said I offer drawing days as a beginner art class uh, at awesomeartschool.com if you're interested if you want to do that draw realistic eye challenge you can join me in my Facebook group which is um, also awesome art school and um yeah i hope you had fun and uh these for all my students who've been asking there you go i hope you enjoyed it and i can't see wait to see what you guys came up with thanks for watching bye and one more quick thing before i go i was just posting this picture on instagram and i was looking at this and i realized this was bothering me that little shape so i'd seen these in other um Pinterest drawings where you could see the eyelashes reflected in the like eye shine area So all I did was I just changed the shape of that From what I had just two seconds ago and then all I did was take my little point three Pencil and just draw in some eyelashes in my eye shine and that's how I got that effect. So Yeah, I like that better actually um and I also took this pencil real quick and I just added a few more lines, darker lines in the eyebrow. And then I just outlined my circle one more time. So full disclosure, I just made a few changes off camera, but I wanted to let you know what they are. So when you saw this, you understood exactly what I had done. So sorry about that. Sometimes you don't realize something until you take a picture of it um, and look at it through the camera's lens as to what it really looks like in, in real life. And that's actually a great way to um, look at your own artwork and to judge it. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this again. I will shut up and enjoy. Thanks. Bye.